The API first approach means the following. Define DTOs for the API first and implement the data model later. When we talk about the API first approach, the first thing that usually comes to mind is Swagger. Apart from excellent API design and documentation functionality, it also provides the Swagger Codigen tool. This tool can simplify the build process by generating server stubs and client SDKs for any API defined with the Open API specification. In this video, we'll use IntelliJ IDEA Ultimate, Swagger CodeGen, and JPA Buddy to build a fully working Spring Boot application based on the Open API specification file. We need to develop an application for the regional pet clinic. This application will gather data about pets and visits from local clinics and provide aggregated info about all visits in the region. All local clinics provide REST API to fetch data. The first thing we need to do is consume local clinics REST API. To implement this in the code, we add Swagger CodeGen and MapStruct dependencies and their plugins. Now we're ready to generate server stubs and client SDKs. Here we go. We're ready to create a data model based on the generated classes. To do it, select Entity from Pojo Action. Let's define a separate package called Model for our entities. Also, we need to create a MapStruct mapper as well. JPA Buddy allows us to do it right from here. The most remarkable thing about JPA Buddy is that it even detects the relationship's cardinality and allows to generate related entities or select existing ones right from here. Let's create entities for visits and users. The local pet clinic returns JSON containing info about pet, user, and its visits. So let's enable cascade operations to save all this data by one API call. Exclude the remove operation for the user entity. We don't want to delete the user when we delete one of its pets from the database. Select Cascade Type All for visits to enable all cascade operations. For the visits reference, we'll need to create an inverse attribute as well. Here we go. Our domain model is ready. Now we can configure how our app will interact with the local pet clinic. Specify the URL address where the local pet clinic is hosted and pass the value to the API client stub generated by the Swagger. Finally, define the pet API bean and pass configured API client as a parameter. We need to set the URL address in the application properties file. JPA Buddy provides a useful intention to add data source connection data to the application properties file. Use the IntelliJ IDEA Show Context Actions shortcut and select the data source menu. Configure the connection via the user interface and the proper values will be scaffolded automatically. Now we can move on to REST API development. Let's create a new package, controllers, and class pet controller in it. Let's create a pet sync service where we'll implement the synchronization logic. Our synchronization logic is quite simple. We'll add an entry to the database if there is no pet with the past ID yet, and update the existing record if the pet is found. With JPA Buddy, we can create Spring Data JPA repository right in the code. Just start typing a repository name. Wow, we didn't even finish typing the repository name, and JPA Buddy already suggests to us to create it. Fantastic! Let's specify a dedicated package, repositories. Here we go. JPA Buddy has generated the proper Spring Data JPA repository and its injection. Now we can code our logic. Inside the add pet method, we fetch pet DTO from the local pet clinic, map it to an entity, and save it to the database. With JPA Buddy, the coding process feels so smooth.
Note that the map struct mapper has been injected as well. Inside the update pet by ID method, we fetch the pet entity by ID from our database. In case it's missing, it throws entity not found exception. Then we fetch pet DTO from the local pet clinic by the same ID value and update the pet via map struct partial update method. Finally, save and return the updated entity. Now we can create a get method handler. And here we go. The pet controller is ready to use. Now let's develop our own API, a REST endpoint to display all visits between two dates. Create a visit service class for the business logic. The method in this service will accept two dates and return a list of visits within a time interval. Let's create a visit repository right from here. The next thing we need is a method to search for visits between two dates. Again, we don't need to open another editor. Just start typing the desired method name. JPA Buddy allows us to call query visual designers right here. We need to find a method that returns a collection of entities. Select the date attribute and between operator. Tick the box to use named parameters, add ordering by pet ID, and specify the method name. That's it! Now we can create a get method handler. Exposing entities with full information via REST API may be considered a bad practice. Let's create a DTO for the visit entity. JPA Buddy detects that the unresolved reference is a good candidate for the DTO class and provides a corresponding quick fix. It shows us a DTO designer window. We also need to create a mapper class, visit mapper, and put it in a separate package. In the REST API, we'll expose the following visit data, visit ID and date, pet ID and name, and user ID. Here we go. The DTO and its mapper have been successfully generated. Finally, we need to map the result to a list of DTOs. JPA Buddy shows us all available mapping options. The last thing we need to do before running our application is initialize the database. With JPA Buddy, we can complete this task in a few clicks. Open the Query Console, call Generate menu, and select Init DDL Action. Choose the source type, model, and the database type, PostgreSQL. The initialization script is ready. Select all statements and execute them. Now we're ready to test our application. We'll use the IntelliJ IDEA web client to do it. Let's synchronize some pets using the REST API. Everything works as expected. Finally, let's make an API call to get visits between two dates. That's it! Now we have a fully functional application. In this video, we've created a Spring Boot application that consumes third-party API using IntelliJ IDEA, Swagger CodeGen, and JPA Buddy. Thank you for watching!